If you started in electronics in Australia in the 1980s or 1990s, you would have almost certainly have built a Dick Smith Funway kit. They were everywhere, as were their stores. In this video, I'll present some background, what the Funway kits were, and a possible future for them. Of course, there were electronic kits before Dick Smith started up, but typically they were single project kits. Typical beginner kits were crystal sets and one or two transistor radios. Not much more than that. Or they were more advanced kits, often derived from magazine projects in journals like Radio TV and Hobbies, Later Electronics Australia, ETI etc. Common kits included test equipment, stereo amplifiers, amateur radio gear and even TVs and electronic organs. There were some imported kits, the Philips Radionics for the beginner, or the Heath kits for the more advanced constructor building a serious item. Both were fairly expensive, and I think most enthusiasts started with salvage bits and projects from books and magazines. We didn't have Tandy Electronics in Australia, at least at that time. But there was Dick Smith. Dick Smith was an entrepreneur who was able to expand his store empire through publicity stunts, tricks and adventures. Dick Smith also pioneered supermarket style electronic shopping. With old style stores like Radio Parts, you had to first line up to get a docket, then line up again to get the product given to you. With Dick Smith, you just grab what you wanted, paid for it and you were out the door. It also helped that retail margins were higher then than they are now. And Dick Smith was able to latch onto popular products coming in. For instance, car radio, CB, amateur radio, personal computers and more. By the end of the 1970s, he had stores in most Australian states. There are three series. Funway 1 for the absolute beginners, which were soldless. Funway 2, based on printed circuit boards with some simple projects. And Funway 3, some more advanced projects. With Funway 1, you could either buy the book and the parts individually, or you could get kits. Projects didn't need soldering. Instead, you got a bit of wood, about 10 by 12 centimetres, and went down to the hardware store and got some screws, some cup washers and a hand drill, and you mounted the components in the board screwed to it. And to help you, there were paper templates in the back of the book, which you could cut out and glue to the board. I don't have a copy of the Funaway 1 book, but I'll go through their kits by having a flick through one of the Dick Smith catalogues. Projects 1 to 10 were in one pack, and projects 11 to 20 in another. You needed both packs to complete 11 to 20. The Volume 2 kits. The book cost $6.95. That price was held constant for years, if not decades. This is the Funway 2 book a progression from Funway 1 and the first that required soldering. The structure of the books is fairly similar. It started with an introduction from Dick Smith, VK2DIK or VK2ZIP which was his old call sign which you'll see in some of the older books. Information on setting up a workspace, tools, identifying the components and what they do, Then a little bit about reading values on the parts, circuit diagrams, Ohm's law, soldering, and then onto the projects. Starting off with a flashing LED, which could be made into various other things like a flashing brooch, a doorbell using a triple five, now interspersed amongst the projects were various bits of electronic history and theory. For instance, this info about the start of the transistor and then the SUPET receiver below it. Three was a Morse code trainer. Four, a universal timer. One thing I should mention with the Funway 2 kits is that you just got the board and the components. Pretty much what you see here. If you actually wanted to make the kit of practical use, you had to buy some extra things. For instance, in this case, a switch, potentiometer, buzzer, battery, etc. And the box as well. 
That was another trip to Dick Smith, more money spent and more sales for them. But it did keep the cost of the basic kit low and you might already have enclosures or other salvage components you could use instead. Project number five, electronic dice, uses ICs, monophonic organ, transistor radio using a ZN414. I've described similar radios in other videos. A touch switch. Mosquito repeller, don't know if that actually works. An amplifier, that could be used with the transistor radio kit to drive a speaker. This is their wireless microphone, Project 11, possibly one of the more popular kits, and it came with the Funray 2 gift pack, the book, the wireless microphone kit, and maybe one or two other bits and pieces. It's very simple using one transistor, and I don't think it was as good as the Talking Electronics wireless microphones, which typically had two or three transistors. Project number 12, light activated switch, bit more an Ohm's law, metal detector. Again, a lot of extra parts needed to make it look really good and practical. Sound switch. Milestones in electronics, phase lock loop. So they're actually getting quite advanced here. Home and car alarm. Siren. Even valve circuits, at least described in their explanatory stuff. LED level display. Intercom. Counter. Now the last project is a shortwave receiver, basically a crystal set, but with a IC used as an audio amplifier. I built this kit, it did work, but it was very deaf and it would only pick up the stronger of the shortwave stations. But there are modifications you could do to make it a direct conversion receiver, and I'll show you that in a moment. One of the things I like about the write-up of this is it tells you how to receive SSB and Morse on what is normally an AM receiver. The answer is you use another receiver who's got a local oscillator and you use either that or its harmonic to provide a beat frequency oscillator that beats with the incoming signal and allows SSB to be received. I used that technique for quite a few years as a shortwave listener and is what led me to discover amateur radio. This is a real live Funray 2 kit, though it looks nothing like it since I've done extensive modifications. You can see the original printed circuit board where I'm pointing to, and the original was a straight shortwave receiver, basically an RF amplifier, diode detector, audio amplifier, and there's the speaker transformer. What I did was I modified it to form a direct conversion receiver I added a local oscillator, which is free running on 3.5 to 3.7 megahertz, covering 80 meters. Then I modified the diode detector. I lifted one end of the diode from its tracks, and that provides a mixer, forming a very basic direct conversion receiver. But the performance on 80 meters is surprisingly good. After the projects, a bit more on understanding radio making your own printed circuit boards, and then front panel labels. These were designed to be used with the Dick Smith Zippy boxes and provided a more professional look to your project. And again, thanks to Breck Martin for this book. This is volume three. There are also gift boxes or gift packs, either Funray one, two or three only, or the lot although that didn't include all the kits from Funray 2 and Funray 3. For those, you still had to buy them individually. The Funray kits were part of a very cunning business approach. With low price books and basic kits to start you off, anyone could afford them. But there are always add-ons. If you wanted to make it better, it was another trip to the shop where they had a chance to sell you more. A winning formula for over 20 years very different to the Tandy approach, where you couldn't buy books separately. Their basic solderless kits were the components mounted in a board with springs and wires, which didn't encourage you to buy more parts, 
and besides, their parts were expensive and overpackaged anyway. If you ask almost anyone who's now a senior electronics technician or manager where they started, the answer almost certainly would have been a Dick Smith Funway kit. Dick Smith Electronics went from being an enthusiast to a consumer store. That meant a bigger sales turnover but less profit because it was competing for a competitive mass market. That didn't last and Dick Smith stores now are no more. However, that doesn't mean it's the end of Funway. Funway is being reborn without the Dick Smith. The Funway name has been purchased and a website has been set up. Good luck to those involved in the new Funway into Electronics. I'll include a link below.